First, the, histo the historical background. Um, I think almost everybody, uh, and I'm a political scientist by training, I think almost everybody who writes in any serious way, thinks in any serious way about the American Republic, is inclined to praise the achievement of the Founding Fathers with regard to the issue of religion and politics, at least the, the foundation they laid for the connection between the two. Uh, they did something which was, uh, well, I think it's fair to characterize it as pioneering. Uh, in those uh, famous claims made, uh, woven into the fabric, not just of our polity, but of our whole way of life, uh, uh, of the First Amendment to the Constitution, the Bill of Rights, uh, which give us those two great ideas, religious freedom and the separation of church and state. I hope you understand, I haven't got time to say much more about it today, but those are different ideas woven together into one uh, statement. But if you ask uh, most anybody who is especially uh, in, well informed about this, what distinguishes the American approach to uh, this problem of religion and politics? That's what they're going to talk about. That's what they're going to say. Um, interestingly enough, the, our spiritual forebears, the, the, the reformed uh, thinkers of the 18th and the 19th century in this country, American reformed thinkers, tended, uh, with very few exceptions, to affirm this arrangement that had developed uh, through the Constitution and the, the, the establishment of this constitutional tradition. They affirmed it uh, very, very uh, enthusiastically. Uh, embraced it. Um, and by the way, the, the, one of the reasons they embraced it so enthusiastically is because uh, their representatives, Congregationalists and Presbyterians, had played a big role in bringing it about. Uh, and they thought it was uh, derived from sources that uh, were very familiar to them that they believed in and they supported. Uh, so they, they uh, affirmed it, uh, they believed in it, and thought it was a, a great thing. And by the way, that has been passed down uh, in, in b broadly in American Protestantism. It's problematized today, I think, but for the longest time, if you'd ask American Protestants uh, about uh, whether or not this set of arrangements that were uh, laid down in the Constitution were a good thing, they would say, of course. And part of the reason for that, sociologists of religion will tell you, is because it produced a flourishing uh, of religion in this country, especially in the 19th century. It created a, a real dynamism in American uh, religious life. So our spiritual forebears said, yes, this is a good thing. We like this. It's one of the most important, valuable things in our mind about the American experience. But, 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 but. They also affirmed something else which was, to put it mildly, in tension with it. And that is, they believed, said matter-of-factly, without any embarrassment, this is a Protestant nation, full stop. This is a Protestant nation. Uh, and not only is it a Protestant nation, but it should remain a Protestant nation. Uh, indeed, that was part of what made it special from their point of view, and they developed elaborate uh, sort of theologies and philosophical claims and historical claims about uh, why that was uh, why that was a, something worth uh, being honored. I think it's worth pausing to try to just tease out for a moment what they meant by that when they said this is a Protestant nation. Uh, this is a Protestant nation. W what did they mean? Well, at least several, at least these things. First of all, they would say, well, in, in the main, insofar as there was any religious influence in the founding, it was Protestant. It was our, and it was our kind of Protestant. Uh, Protestant, uh, therefore, roots to, to the American experience. And it was, a, they would say in turn, this is a reflection of uh, ideals and ideas that we as good Protestants uh, and, and Reformed Protestants in particular uh, held. And then they would add this further claim, which is the thing that gets people's teeth on edge today. And they would say, and it should remain in the hands of those Protestants and people who believe this, especially our forebears would have said, Reformed Protestants, if this experiment in liberty, in righteous liberty, they would say, is going to endure. If it gets into the wrong hands, then mm, bets are off. So uh, not only did they believe all that, but they also really fought for it very vigorously.